Umningagwa's inquiry into Harare precursor to impose commission. President Emerson Umningagwa's appointment of retired Judge Matthew Chida to chair a commission of inquiry to investigate governance issues at Harare City Council could be a precursor to the imposition of a politically hand-picked commission to replace elected councillors. This will effectively allow ZANU-PF to run the affairs of the capital city in an arrangement reminiscent of 2003 when ZANU-PF official Sekasai Makovera took control of Town House as head of a commission that ran the affairs of Harare City Council between 2006 and 2008. Her tenure was characterized by accusations of bad governance and brazen milking of the local authority. Sources told the news hopes that ahead of the Southern African Development Community SADC Summit, which Zimbabwe is scheduled to host in August this year, the government is increasingly unsettled with the prospects of hosting regional heads of state in a capital governed by the opposition. While on the surface it may seem relations of ZANU-PF and the opposition CCC Mayor Jacob Mafume are thawing, the reality is that the ruling party and particularly number one, Umningagwa, are uncomfortable with the prospect of having to host SADC leaders in a capital city that is run by the opposition, said an impeccable source. There is therefore a strong consideration to replace the elected opposition council with a commission led by a ZANU-PF stalwart. The plan is therefore to do that once the Commission of Inquiry produces its report that is most definitely going to paint a picture of bad governance by the Harare City Council. Sources said, on the other hand, ZANU-PF officials will be happy to have a commission running the affairs of Harare Council to push corrupt deals and further the asset stripping of the local authority. Similar to what happened during the Makovera Commission era. The Makovera Commission facilitated the takeover of Harare Municipal Water Supply by the state-run Zimbabwe National Water Authority, resulting in the total collapse of water supplies and sewer reticulation. As a result, thousands of people died of cholera during that era. The commission also recommended Operation Murambat's Vina which displaced millions of people. Inviting censure from the United Nations. Makovera was accused of abusing ratepayers' money for her luxuries at the expense of service delivery. She was accused of illegally buying a council house in Borrowdale suburb for a paltry amount of then ZW$780 million instead of ZW$5 5 billion. The Commission's term of office expired in 2008 and was not renewed. In 2019, Makovera was arrested at her Rufingara farm and charged with criminal abuse of office after allocating an 80 million US dollar tender to Olga Investments to construct airport road without due diligence. The issue of the Geo Pomona deal that had been railroaded by Minister July Moyo which opposition councillors tried to reject is still fresh in the minds of the ZANU-PF top brass. They will therefore rather have a commission that gives a nod to all such deals at the wink of an eye said a source. Harare has 45 wards. There are 14 women's quota councillors. Tihi total number of councillors is therefore 59. CCC has 10 women's quota councillors and ZANU-PF has 4. Out of the 45 directly elected councillors, ZANU-PF has 5 councillors. While the CCC has 40. Immediately after the August 2023 elections, Harare Mayor Jacob Mafume would, in the opinion of the president, be for public welfare, the government notice reads in part. ZANU-PF got three wards while the CCC got 42 wards. The mayor, Jacob Mafume, is from the CCC, which means the city is in the hands of the opposition. Harare residents say maneuvers to install a commission must be stopped as it is illegal and a threat to democracy. Precious Shamba, the Harare Residents Trust Director, said no effort should be spared in resisting the installation of a hand-picked commission to run Harare and replace elected councillors. A commission to run Harare City Council will be illegal, unjustified and unconstitutional. Establishing a commission to replace our elected councillors will be regarded as a direct threat to democracy and will be resisted through all available democratic means. Shamba said. 
The Harare Residence Trust continues to monitor developments and will not hesitate to raise the flag on any actions that reveal undemocratic intentions. Our expectation is that the Commission of Inquiry will make the right call to address the governance. Administrative and corruption issues affecting the city of Harare. In the government notice issued on May 12, Uningogwa said the Commission of Inquiry's mandate stretches from 2017 when he assumed power through a military coup. Whereas, in terms of Section 2.1 of the Commissions of Inquiry Act, Chapter 1007, it is provided that, the President may, when he considers it advisable, by proclamation, to inquire into any matter in which any inquiry. Now, therefore, under and by virtue of the powers and authority vested in the President as aforesaid, I do, by this proclamation, establish a commission of inquiry into matters of local governance by Harare City Council since 2017. The Commission of Inquiry is also investigating financial management of revenue generated through special purpose vehicles and other outsourced arrangements, reasons behind the failure to operate an enterprise resource planning system. Procedures of management, sale or lease or transfer of the local authorities' properties to private entities as well as the convening of council meetings. The Commission of Inquiry also has a mandate to investigate compliance with procurement laws. Inclusive of disposal of assets and compliance with the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Act, Chapter 2223. The notice added that the Commission of Inquiry will conduct visitations where necessary. Summon witnesses, record proceedings, minute testimonies and documents, consider and manage all information gathered in order to arrive at appropriate findings and recommendations to the President. Last week, Local Government and Public Works Minister Daniel Gawe told the National Assembly that Harare is the most incompetent council in the country. Sources say this resonated well with ZANU-PF's plan to eventually appoint a hand-picked commission to run the capital city. Gawe expressed the sentiment while responding to legislator Benjamin Maswashiri, who had queried the poor performance of most local authorities, especially urban councils. In response, Gawe said corruption was of major concern in local authorities, leading to poor service delivery as well as failure to produce proper budgets. Some of the local authorities have even failed to produce budgets. They have failed to give us budgets and, as we speak, a clear example is Harare City Council. They have failed to prepare a budget. This is the level of incompetence within these local authorities. Gawe said. In July 2022, Umningogwa, at the burial of the late Minister of State for Harare Metropolitan Province Oliver Chidewu, promised to weed out Harare councillors. The current rot in Harare and other local authorities under opposition parties must be brought to an end. It is most unfortunate that the achievements and legacy of the likes of the late engineer Chidewu have been ruined by the current crop of city of Harare councillors. Umningogwa said. These opportunists have no affinity to improve the quality of life of our people and instead continue to abuse their public positions for personal expediency. This trend should not be allowed into the future. Please like, comment, share and follow this channel for more information or updates on news and entertainment.